Hello, this is Pastor Rick, and I want to welcome you to this special Sunday forum in preparation for Palm Sunday. Glad that you could join us for the Sunday forum as we talk about the importance of this story in the gospel. And I have to say, growing up as a child, this was one of my favorite Sundays because we all got palms, real palms, whole palms, not just the fonts. And we would march down the, the middle of the church uh, in the middle of all our adoring parents and be singing, you know, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. And it was, uh, I guess it just filled my imagination, still in my memory. And so we want to focus in on that, not just because it was special back then, but because this story is just laden with meaning as Jesus enters triumphantly into Jerusalem. He's coming in, claiming to be the king, claiming to be the Messiah, and also the new Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's entering into the city during the Passover meal. And so, I guess I have to say this is not a children's story. This is more for adults. And there's all sorts of complex and nuanced messages in this story. And so, we want to, we want to watch this uh, short video that goes into some of those details so that when you hear the story on Sunday, you can understand and grasp all the meaning and the excitement around Jesus entering into Jerusalem. Let's watch the video right now. Amid shouts of praise and the waving of palm branches, Jesus triumphantly entered into the city of Jerusalem. This event marked the beginning of the most significant week in human history. Understanding the historical setting of this singular event can teach us of the ultimate mission of the Savior, as the Lamb of God and the true King of Kings. To better understand the importance of the triumphal entry, it is helpful to first understand its correlation to the Feast of Passover or Pesach, Passover was the first of three major Jewish feasts celebrated each year. The feast was to commemorate the deliverance of ancient Israel from bondage in Egypt. According to Exodus 12, the Lord commanded Israel to select a lamb without blemish on the tenth day of the first month. Once selected, the lamb was then brought into their homes to live with the family for the next four days. On the eve before the start of the fifteenth day, they were then to kill the lamb, smear the blood on the doorposts, and share together the Passover feast. If they did this, the Lord promised that the destroying angel would pass by them and spare the firstborn of the home. Every year afterward, Israel celebrated Passover to remember the great deliverance from bondage. In addition, the Jews at the time of Jesus were looking forward to a coming Messiah who would hopefully likewise during Passover deliver them from their Roman oppressors. With this background in mind, let's study the events of the triumphal entry. Shortly before Passover, the Savior began his last mortal journey to Jerusalem. Like Jesus, hundreds of thousands of Jews were also arriving to celebrate the feast. With the city swelling beyond capacity, many would have camped on the Mount of Olives and surrounding areas. Jesus chose to stay in nearby Bethany with the family of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, whom he had just raised from the dead. News of this remarkable miracle spread like wildfire. The promised Messiah had come. As the Savior and his disciples climbed over the Mount of Olives, with the temple glistening in the morning sun, the people cut branches from palm trees, waving them excitedly, and laid their garments on the ground to cover his path. The significance of the timing is unmistakable. According to the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the day Jesus entered was the tenth day of the month, five days before Passover. This would mean that on the very same day that the Jews were selecting their Passover lambs, Jesus, the true Lamb of God, rode into Jerusalem and was symbolically chosen by the people. 
Also, just as the lambs would be brought into the homes of the people to stay for the next four days, so too Jesus came into his father's house, the temple, and taught for the next four days before his death. This act of worship by the Jews during the triumphal entry fulfilled the prophecy of Zechariah which stated, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you! He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey. Sadly, as the week progressed, the Jews saw that Jesus did not come as the conquering Messiah they had hoped for. They realized that Jesus would not bring them the political deliverance they so desired. Yet they did not understand the true deliverance he would bring through his atonement, death, and resurrection. Only five days later, some of this same crowd who had previously shouted praises at his arrival would now shout for the death of the Lamb of God. Palm Sunday revolves around the story that we just saw enacted. But it's not just for adults. Often this service is really targeted to children and how they both tell the story and receive it. And so we wanted to add this clip for all the children in your family. Enjoy. Palm Sunday is the first day in an important week in the Christian calendar called Holy Week. The exact date of Palm Sunday will change each year because the festival of Easter's date depends on the moon. However, Palm Sunday will always begin a week, which follows with important days such as Monday Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter will be on the Sunday following Palm Sunday. On Palm Sunday, Christians remember the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem on a donkey. Jesus rode a donkey as opposed to a horse because it was a humble way to travel and showed that he came in peace. It also fulfilled a prophecy from the Old Testament which said that the king would come gentle and riding on a donkey. A large crowd welcomed Jesus, waving palm leaves, shouting Hosanna and throwing their cloaks at Jesus' feet to make the way less bumpy for him. They laid palm leaves in front of him as a sign they believed his message and that he was king. Jesus healed the lame and the blind at the temple, but not everyone was happy. Some of the chief priests and teachers of the law disapproved. On Palm Sunday today, many Christians celebrate with a special service in church. People are traditionally given a cross made from a single palm leaf. Many churches reenact the Palm Sunday story with a procession either outside or around the church, while people sing songs of praise and wave palm leaves. In the Netherlands, palm crosses are decorated with sweets and bread. In the Philippines, people act out the story of Palm Sunday with someone dressing up as Jesus and riding on a real donkey. While in Spain, people wear their best clothes or special costumes and go on walks called processions. And now we want to close. What is Palm Sunday without singing? All glory, laud, and honor. Once again, we invite you to sing along with this powerful hymn. 